Hey, welcome back, Free Code Campers. I forgot I was using the free screencast software that only gives me 10 minutes at a time. But anyway, we've got to get a unique ID that describes the audio clip and the inner text we want to be one the letter. So how are we going to do that? All right, so we're rendering, we're mapping over our data down here on our main app, and we're returning this other class we made, uh, the drum pad. So we're going to pass down some props. So we want the ID to uniquely identify the sound. So we're going to go D dot uh, ID because we made our IDs descriptive. So we're sending down D dot ID. Oh, D dot ID is a prop. So this becomes this that props that ID, and that's the drum pad. So it needs to contain needs to contain a letter. That corresponds to uh, the letter on the keyboard. So pass in letter, and that's going to be D dot letter. Since that's up here, that's our letter. So up here, we'll pass in. This dot props dot letter. And you can see the letters pop up right there. And we go over and run our test. And now we're passing that test. So next test within each drum pad there should be an HTML5 audio element that has an SRC attribute pointing to the audio clip, a class name of clip, and an ID corresponding to the inner text of its parent drum pad, meaning the ID matches the key. Okay, so this we want some audio. Audio tag in there. Uh, I wanted ID equal to letter, so that's like we just did. That's this that props that letter. Uh, it wants the SRC equaling, well, we don't have an SRC, so we'll pass down SRC here. We got SRC right here. So that becomes this.props.src. And we'll break this out a little bit. And you may be wondering why. I split this out into its its uh, new component, but I'll show you. It'll make sense eventually. Um, let's see. I think it had a class name of clip. So that's the yeah, that's class name. Shut up, Windows. Seek viewer notifications. Go away. Um, or what else it was supposed to do. Let's see. Well, we're passing a lot of tests all of a sudden. Uh, so we got the idea with the letter. Got the SRC. Okay, we didn't set that up, but it says it's passing. So sometimes you can pass tests by accident. We didn't set it up to, when you click on it, the audio plays. We didn't do any of that. I'm going to press the trigger key. My child audio should be triggered. We didn't do that. But we didn't actually do those. We still have to do those. And then the last thing is, okay, you get the, uh, you get the inner text uh, associated with the audio clip when you get a trigger. So we're, we're going to wire up the sound right now. 
So to wire up the sound, um, let's see here, to wire up the sound, we need to put an on click handler. On to this. And we'll make this dot handle click. And we'll just put a function right here. Make it an arrow function. Handle click. Look at something real quick. Okay. My bad. about that. We're going to put the handle click up in here. So one thing we need to do, this is a nifty little secret here. So one thing we can do with this audio, the DOM element, so we need to use a ref. So these, these can be kind of tricky in React, but basically it's just an arrow function that takes uh, Oh, I missed that audio. So basically allowing you to use the JavaScript, uh, call something this, that audio, because the audio element here is actually just like a representation in React. It's not the actual DOM element. So to get to the actual reference to the DOM, which is why it's called ref, now we can say this, that audio equals the reference to this audio. So Basically, now this component within our component, this.audio, refers to this component now. So, that's pretty big to have. And we'll put the on click listener on the div itself. Okay, on click. We'll call this this by handle click once again. And we'll say, and for more on more on refs, look at I recommend looking up at the uh, React website. It's got some good stuff. So here we could say this the audio dot play because we've already got the SRC in there, and uh, there's one little secret I like to do with that. Let's see. This side of the current time equals zero. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how much difference it makes, but sometimes when you want to play two sounds close to each other, one's playing uh, and it won't let you activate the next one. Sometimes it gets bogged down. So if you put current time equals zero, it, it makes it snappy like. Uh, you can just hit one after another, and it, you can repeat really quickly with the key. So it, it's just a little trick that I found that helps things sound a little better. So you've got the handle click. That's on that div. Um, and we could give it a little style real quick. So we've got what do we have so far. We've got a drum machine. Our display we'll give it a little style I'm just gonna copy and paste a couple of styles we'll set that up in the next video we'll keep rolling